Welcome to the PM services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, uh, April the 4th, Easter Sunday. I'm Mark Syme, the minister here at the Northfield Church of Christ. We'll be singing a few songs. Uh, we will be observing the Lord's Supper and um, in keeping with the fact that it is Easter Sunday, I have a lesson for you that I have entitled Honoring Easter. So if you would get out your songbooks, we are singing from Songs of Faith and Praise, and turn them first to song number 180, 180. Jesus is Lord, my Redeemer, how I love Him, how I love Him, He is risen, He is coming, Lord come quickly. Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Five hundred and twenty eight. Five twenty eight. We'll sing one, two, and four. One, two, and four. I know that my Redeemer lives and ever prays for me. I know eternal life He gives from sin and sorrow free. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life He gives. I know that my Redeemer lives, that my Redeemer lives. He wills that I should wholly be in word and thought, in deed. Then I his holy face may see when from this earth life freed. 
I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life He gives. I know that my Redeemer lives, that my Redeemer lives. I know that over yonder stands a place prepared for me. Home, a house not made with hands, most wonderful to see. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life He gives. I know that my Redeemer lives, that my Redeemer lives. And to, to prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper, uh, let's turn to number 354. Three fifty four. Sing number verses one, two, and four. One, two, and four. I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that thou might ransom be, he and quick and from the dead. I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? My Father's house of love, I my glory circled throne. I left for earthly night, for wandering sad and lone. I laughed, I laughed it all for thee. Hast thou left all for me? I laughed, I laughed it all for thee. Hast thou left all for me? I have brought to thee down from my home above salvation full and free my pardon and my I bring, I bring rich gifts to thee. What hast thou brought for me? I bring, I bring rich gifts to thee. What hast thou brought for me? On this Easter Sunday, 
um, we turn to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, but before he was resurrected, of course, he had to die and he had to be buried. And it is uh, gathering about this Lord's table uh, that we uh, celebrate this. Uh, we, of course, on this day, celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. But the important thing, uh, along with the resurrection, is that he died for our sins, that he gave his life, he shed his blood, that our sins might be forgiven. And so uh, when we do gather together on the first day of the week to break bread, uh, we remember the sacrifice that was made for us. And then we remember that uh, the grave could not hold our Savior. And on the third day, he did arise from the dead. And so we have these wonderful emblems uh, as part of the Lord's Supper that uh, speak to his body and speak to his blood. Let's pray for the bread, please. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful that uh, you had this wonderful plan for us, this, this wonderful plan that uh, included Jesus coming to us and teaching us such wonderful true words. But we knew, we know also that part of your plan was that Jesus would be our high priest, that he would uh, sacrifice one time for all, that we would not have to sacrifice bulls and goats and uh, things of that sort anymore because Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. He gave up his body for us and it is uh, uh, this bread that uh, is the new covenant of his body and we just pray for the bread. Uh, be with us, dear Heavenly Father, as we partake. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, um, we have uh, 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 Apostle Paul saying that in like manner, uh, he took the cup. And after supper saying, uh, uh, take this cup. And he talked about the symbology here of it representing the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus. I just pray, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, you would be with us and help us to understand the, the nature of the forgiveness of sin that we have through the blood of your Son. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And on the first day of the week, we are uh, required to lay by in store and uh, give back to the Lord that which we have been blessed uh, with the realization that all that we have comes from you, that uh, nothing is, is permanent in that area, dear Heavenly Father. And so we uh, give back to you uh, what you deserve. Help us to be generous. Help us to show the gratitude that we ought to. Uh, I pray this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Now, if you would, please, if you would turn to uh, number 346. 346.
I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, he lives salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, he lives, he lives Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, he lives. He lives salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. Lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, he lives, he lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, he lives, he lives salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I'm glad you were able to uh, sing with us. I pray that the Lord was praised in our song and that uh, 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 we will be blessed because we do indeed uh, praise our God uh, because he certainly enjoys and, and deserves and has earned that praise. Today is April the 4th and uh, it is the date for Easter this year. And so we have had an, uh, a service this morning, and you know, much of the world on this particular Sunday turns to the Lord and thinks about his resurrection. In case you are curious, uh, this came about in the fourth century. It was part of the Nicene Creed, and it was observed that Easter Sunday would be celebrated on the first Sunday past the first full moon past the vernal equinox. And that is this year, April the 4th. It's why the date floats. And uh, I, I also might note that Easter is not a biblical word. Now, the only version that carries the word Easter in it is the King James Version. And I found that uh, kind of interesting. And in, uh, in Acts uh, chapter 12 and verse 4, Acts 12 and verse 4, it says, And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him into four quartanions of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Okay, after Easter. Now, every other 
uh, translation uh, of uh, the Lord's word is uh, the, the term used is Passover. Okay, so that's the way uh, it has been translated. So the Greek word has always been uh, uh, talked about as Passover. Now, I have just a, uh, I don't know if you call this a caveat or uh, just, just so that we understand uh, with the Christmas season, the other really big Christian celebration season, um, uh, we have um, so many worldly things involved in it. You know, there's a Christmas season and people put up uh, Christmas trees and there's Santa Claus and the giving of presents and so forth. Uh, I, I, without trying to break a bubble, uh, the word Easter came from a pagan holiday. It was a pagan holiday of fertility. And it has carried over, hence the Easter bunny and baby chicks that are symbolic of Easter. Now, this does not diminish what Easter is. Please, I, I, I didn't want to rain on anybody's parade. I just wanted to explain uh, to all of us just a bit of the origin. Now, the, within the Nicene Creed and within the formation of the Roman Catholic Church, the church was trying to reach out to all people. And so the church started to substitute the term Easter for the term Passover. Now you have to remember that the church did not necessarily have the Jewish ties any longer. Many, there were many more uh, Gentile Christians than there were Jewish Christians, and that is certainly more than true uh, today in 2021. And so the terminology or the term Easter uh, was substituted for Passover. But what did not change was that Easter marked that special day, that third day after Jesus died, where he rose from the dead. And so it served as a reminder of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, early this morning, literally millions of people got up at sunrise because there is a special significance to the sunrise. Those that went to the tomb went. Uh, actually, I think they were going uh, before the sun had actually come up. And if I remember my days uh, in uh, some of the other churches that I went to, uh, in the Baptist church and in the Methodist church, they had services that were called sunrise services. And uh, there was a celebration at that time uh, to remember Christ's resurrection. And I might note that it's commendable. All right? I, I'm not here to knock Easter. The, the title of my lesson is honoring Easter. And so uh, it is commendable that millions of people want to remember the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Churches are more filled on Easter than they are on any other Sunday of the year. Uh, Christmas does not always fall on a Sunday, but Easter Sunday always falls on a Sunday. Remember, it's the first Sunday after the first full moon after the vernal equinox, and so it will always fall on Sunday. And so Easter has become the most well-attended service within the Christian world. However, with that in mind, I would like us to um, think about several things 
in regard to honoring the Lord's resurrection. Right? And I, I might also just throw this in, just like it was with Christmas. There are no scriptures here. No matter how we dice the New Testament, that say on one special day of the 365 days that there are in the year, we designate that as the day of Jesus' resurrection. There is nowhere in our New Testament that tells us to, to celebrate that day, that singular day. Now, Let's remember some things that I think are important. First is a fact. And the fact is, Jesus rose from the dead at about this time of the year. Uh, unlike Christmas, we've designated December 25th. Easter always happened in the springtime. It always happened this and and we can trace that back through new testament history secondly the resurrection of jesus christ sets the tone for our christian belief that jesus through the power of god was able to resurrect himself from the dead and appear to his disciples and to other people for some 40 days afterwards is a is a wonderful wonderful miracle never ever 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 to be diminished it's a key part and in speaking of christ the apostle paul in romans chapter 4 verse 25 said who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. He was raised so that we would be sanctified, we would be consecrated, and we would be justified. And I'm throwing this in, and I mentioned it already. God does not command anyone to honor Christ's resurrection by worshiping him on a particular day. The Sunday of Easter, in reality, is not any more important than every Lord's Day. The, scripture, the scriptures tell us Hebrews 10.25, not forsaking the assembly. Acts chapter 20, verse 7, they gathered together on the first day of the week. We know that on the first day of the week, and that is Sunday, the Lord's day, we are to gather together, and we are to do this every single Sunday. All right? Now again, don't... Don't go to sleep tonight saying, Mark said that Easter is a, well, they're not even supposed to. No. I'll tell you the truth, I've always liked Easter. Uh, I would always buy my mother uh, a lily or, uh, or some kind of living plant because it was, a, it, was a, it was a celebration that honored life because Jesus came back to life. And so it was a, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful time of year. But just remember, uh, the scriptures tell us that we, were, we are to worship every Lord's day. So what is this honoring the resurrection that is the title of my lesson really all about? And I want to tell you this, the Bible does in every certain term teach us how to honor Christ's resurrection. Are you ready for this? To honor his resurrection is through the act of baptism. The fundamental facts of the gospel are these. One, Jesus died. Two, Jesus was buried. 
and three, Jesus was resurrected from the dead. If we look at uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, by which you have received and wherein you stand, by which you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. All right, here it is. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. There it is, black and white, as plain as it can be. And when uh, Paul wrote to the church at Thessalonica in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8, he said, uh, Our retribution to those who do not know God and to those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord. So, since our Christian faith is based upon the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And these are the fundamental facts of the gospel. How does one obey the gospel? You see where I'm going? If, if this does not make perfect sense, um, I, I, I am preaching not to the choir. <laughs> Right? If the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus are not the basic facts of what the good news of Jesus are, then how do we obey that gospel? Well, the Apostle Paul explained it to us. and He said that one, when one obeys the gospel, uh, he reminded the brethren in Rome that this is what happens. This is what they had done. He said in Romans 6, 17, But God be thanked that you were servants of sin, but have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Now, what was the form of the doctrine? <laughs> the form of the doctrine was Jesus died, was buried, and was resurrected from the dead. And it says, you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine. They had obeyed it. They had obeyed it when they were baptized. How do I know that? If we look at Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4, it's as plain, as simple as we can get it. Know you not that so many of us as were baptized unto Jesus Christ, are you ready? Were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. And like Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so that we too might walk in a newness of life when we come up out of that water, we are resurrected. We live a new life. Paul says it just as clearly. The baptism is, baptism is, a, is a burial in which we die to our sins. So it's a death. It's a burial. And when we come up, we live a new life, a resurrected life, if I might use that term. So when one is immersed in the waters of baptism into that watery grave, they have, uh, they have obeyed the gospel. And so in obeying the gospel, what have they done? They've honored Christ's resurrection. All right, they've honored Christ's resurrection. It's why part of the reason to me why baptism is so very, very important. You know, Paul says it very, very clearly. We were baptized into his death. 
Okay, we were buried in the water and we rose up out of the water. And so with that in mind, as this Easter Sunday closes and we put our heads on our pillows tonight, each of us should gather to worship God on every Lord's Day. Not just Easter Sunday, but every Lord's Day, every Sunday. And one really honors Christ's resurrection by being immersed in water for the remission of sins to walk a new life with him. And isn't this a perfect segue to our invitation this evening? The question is, um, did you worship God on this Easter morning? That's a question. But there's a more fundamental question. Have you been immersed for the forgiveness of your sins to obey the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? And I would convey to you, to all of you, this evening, that that is truly the way to honor Easter, to make it an honorable time of the year, because it is part of the truth, the good news, the glad tidings of God's word. The glad tidings are that Jesus died, was buried, and was resurrected. And so if you have not obeyed Jesus into baptism, that invitation is extended to you this evening. I know we're doing this via YouTube. If you need to respond, call one of us, any of us. Get your directory out. We're ready. We will assist you in that. We're also to confess our sins one to another. One to another. If, uh, if you need to do that, we're ready to confess with you. I pray that uh, all of us will uh, take Jesus into our hearts and uh, remember that each Sunday is Easter Sunday when we're Christian. Each Sunday as a Christian, we have celebrated and honored the resurrection of Jesus Christ by obeying him into what Jesus wants us to do. When he sent his disciples out as he uh, ascended into heaven. He said, go into all the world and preach the good news. And he said, baptizing them into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's pray together. Our dear God, we just are so grateful for the plan that you have had for us uh, all, all the way through from creation that in the beginning was the Word, and uh, that you sent Jesus to us as the Word, and that we can adhere to his teachings and be saved through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Be with us this evening, dear Heavenly Father. Help us all to turn to you. Help us to turn to you in such a way that uh, we would just want to live godly lives and, and be a part of you, dear Heavenly Father. Be with all those on our prayer list and our bulletin that have asked for our prayers. I pray that you would uh, bless them and be with them and uh, help us to be prayer warriors for folks that uh, have maladies, whether they be physical or spiritual. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would uh, continue to bless us, continue to be with us, and uh, see us through the evening, and help us to look forward to the next time that we meet together again. I pray this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe, and may God bless you all. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah, from the heavens praise his name. Jehovah in the highest, all his angels praise proclaim, all his hosts together praise him, sun and moon and stars on high, praise him all ye and of heaven, and he floods above the sky. Let them praise his dear Jehovah, for his name.
cedars, holy hills and mountains high, creeping things and beasts and cattle, birds that in the heavens fly, kings of earth and all ye people, princes, greatest judges all, praise his name, young men. Oh.